Have you ever considered the transformation of sand into glass? You may be thinking about it while you glance out of your window or looking at your smartphone screen. Glass, an ever-present element in our daily lives, holds an intriguing origin that remains a mystery to many. This transparent and often delicate material is prevalent in various forms, from the lenses of eyeglasses and television screens to the windshields of our vehicles and the windows of our homes. Glass plays an irreplaceable role in scientific and technological applications, serving crucial functions in laboratories with test tubes and beakers, as well as in telecommunications through fiber optic cables that facilitate internet connectivity. Surprisingly, this versatile material originates from something as ordinary and plentiful as sand. Yes, the sandy beaches you stroll along, the shifting dunes of the desert, and even the gritty residue in your shoes after a day outdoors are all fundamental to this process. Sand is a naturally occurring granular substance composed of finely divided rock and mineral particles, primarily consisting of silica or silicon dioxide. This compound is essential for glass production, undergoing a remarkable transformation under specific conditions. All begins from the transformation of sand to glass with the application of extreme heat, reaching levels that are far beyond typical cooking temperatures, approximately 1,700 degrees Celsius. This intensity is sufficient to melt rock. Sand is predominantly made up of silicon dioxide molecules, each comprising one silicon atom bonded to two oxygen atoms. These molecules are organized in a rigid, repeating structure that gives sand its solid form. Upon exposure to such extreme temperatures, we do not merely raise the sand's temperature. We provide enough energy to break the bonds between the silicon and oxygen atoms. As the heat escalates, the bonds that unite the silicon and oxygen atoms begin to fracture. The molecules vibrate increasingly, leading to a breakdown of the solid structure as sand transitions into a liquid state. To visualize this, one might imagine a vibrant city with activity. Then, envision a grand celebration occurring at its heart. The city's inhabitants, akin to our silicon and oxygen atoms, are drawn to the festivities, momentarily abandoning their routines. This analogy illustrates the transformative process that occurs when sand is subjected to heat. It is important to note that this transition does not occur instantaneously. It necessitates time for the heat to permeate the sand and for the molecular bonds to sever. However, once these bonds break, the result is a pool of molten sand. This molten substance is not only exceedingly hot, but also exhibits viscosity, flowing slowly, reminiscent of honey. In this transitional phase, we can begin to shape and mold the molten sand, laying the groundwork for the subsequent stages of glass production. At this point, we have a pool of liquid sand, but we have not yet achieved glass. With our molten material at hand, the next step involves imparting shape. How we manipulate this substance will ultimately dictate its final form, be it a window pane, a bottle, or a marble. One of the most traditional and enduring techniques employed is glass blowing. In this process, a glob of molten glass is affixed to the end of a blowpipe, where air is then blown into it to create a bubble. The artisan can shape this bubble by rolling it on a smooth surface, swinging it in the air, or utilizing various tools to cut, pull, and press it. This intricate interaction between the glassmaker and the molten material is a delicate balance that demands skill, patience, and a steady hand. Alternatively, glass pressing involves pouring molten glass into a mold and applying pressure with a plunger to form it according to the mold's design. This technique is particularly suited for producing dishes, bowls, and various types of tableware. Drawing, on the other hand, is used to create long, continuous glass pieces such as window panes or tubing. In this method, molten glass is drawn upward from a tank in an unbroken stream, cooling and solidifying as it is shaped. This process facilitates the production of large, uniform glass structures. Each of these techniques imparts unique characteristics to the finished product. The allure of a hand-blown glass vase lies in its slight imperfections, reflecting the uniqueness of the artisan's touch. On the other side, a pressed glass dish offers a combination of sturdiness and precision, making it ideal for everyday use. Meanwhile, 
drawn glass, with its sleek and uninterrupted surface, is perfect for allowing light to pass through windows or facilitating illumination in fiber optic cables. Once we have shaped our glass, still hot and pliable, we must proceed to the next critical stage, the cooling process, known as annealing. After the glass has been formed, it is essential to cool it down properly. This step is far from trivial. It requires a meticulous approach to temperature management, emphasizing the importance of patience and precision. Why is this cooling phase so vital? If the molten glass cools too quickly, it can develop internal stresses, resulting in cracks and fractures that compromise the integrity of the final product. Thus, a slow, controlled cooling process is essential. This is where annealing comes into play. During this phase, the glass is gradually cooled in a specialized oven known as an annealing layer, allowing for the release of internal stresses over an extended period. This careful management ensures the strength and durability of the finished glass item. The gradual decrease in temperature facilitates the arrangement of molecules within the glass, allowing them to achieve a stable structure. As the temperature declines, the molten glass begins to solidify. The silicon dioxide molecules, which were previously in a state of free movement, start to decelerate and bond, creating a rigid network. This marks the transformation of our initially fluid molten sand into glass as we recognize it. However, the cooling process continues even after it has solidified. The cooling process, known as annealing, is deliberate and controlled. It is not merely about allowing the glass to cool naturally. It involves regulating the cooling rate to prevent thermal stress-induced cracking. This step is essential for ensuring the durability and longevity of the final product. This meticulous process requires time and precision, ultimately yielding a solid, transparent, and aesthetically pleasing material that has captivated humanity for centuries. These three fundamental phases, heating, shaping, and cooling, while seemingly straightforward, are executed with remarkable complexity. Each step showcases the intricate relationship between art and science, and mastering this process resembles the art of alchemy. Until next time, continue to explore and embrace curiosity.